Recent 60 Minutes Vanity Fair poll, too many sequels and remakes was the number one thought people had about movies today. Not complaint, but overall thought. But the box office tells a different story, and those are the only kind of numbers that interest Hollywood. Of the top 10 movies of 2010, half of them were sequels. And in 2011, 24 sequels will be hitting theaters. And it's those very sequels that are generating the most buzz. So here's a list of the top 10 sequels to look forward to in 2011. While the Mission Impossible franchise has been losing steam over the years, particularly thanks to Tom Cruise's personal and professional meltdown, what makes Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol so interesting is that Tom Cruise might not be heading up this franchise much longer. With both Jeremy Renner and Lost's Josh Holloway joining the team, the rumor is that Paramount is hoping one, or both, will become the new face of Mission Impossible. J.J. Abrams, who made his feature film directorial debut with MI3, is back as producer and co-writer, but he's handing the reins over to Brad Bird, who is making his live-action directorial debut. If Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol is half as good as The Incredibles, Paramount's worries are over. Move over, Justin Bieber! There's another pint-sized singing sensation in town, Alvin and the Chipmunks. While Bieber is just now setting his sights on Hollywood, Alvin and company have been movie stars since the franchise was rebooted for a third time in 2007. Pulling in hundreds of millions of dollars on the screen alone, this third film will take the Chipmunks out of high school and off the stage as they get chip-wrecked. And while the sequel upped the ante by introducing the Chipettes, this time 20th Century Fox has another card to play, 3D. And with those crazy chipmunk antics and catchy song and dance numbers, maybe we'll finally get our 3D money's worth. The original Scream came out in 1996, and not only pumped new blood into horror movies, but changed the course of the genre for years to come, until Saw came out and changed it again. But for an entire generation that was won over by the sly wit of Wes Craven and Kevin Williamson's slasher pick, this is a welcome return, even if Scream 2 and 3 were major disappointments. Old favorites Nev Campbell, David Arquette, and Courtney Cox are back, along with new additions Anna Paquin, Hayden Panettiere, Emma Roberts, Adam Brody, and Rory Culkin. Wes Craven has said this newest Scream will factor in the gory state of horror movies today. But can this movie be everything to all horror fans without slitting its own throat? The Hangover was one of those rare surprise hits, the kind of movie that elevates the career of everyone involved. So, of course, Hollywood wants a repeat performance. And writer-director Todd Phillips and his cast will try to deliver. But how do you top the first film? Why, you go to Bangkok. The setup is that our three favorite crazy bros and that other guy will travel to Bangkok for Stu's wedding, where hilarity will ensue. But things got serious behind the camera when the cast and crew refused to work with Mel Gibson, who'd been cast in a cameo. The producers, respecting their co-workers' objections, quickly replaced Gibson with Liam Neeson. Also rumored to be making a cameo in the film? Former President Bill Clinton. Yeah, that's how golden this franchise is becoming. If you were on any entertainment news website this week, you saw this movie's publicity nightmare unfolding. Someone leaked this poorly photoshopped image of the cast, and the internet responded with a resounding lame. While 20th Century Fox scrambled to get the image taken down, obviously they couldn't get everyone to comply. Therefore, the very next day, several official photos were released trying to persuade fanboys that Kick-Ass's Matthew Vaughn was actually making a decent film. Sure, setting the movie in the 1960s is risky, and alongside Captain America, it will be one of two period action movies this summer. But if Vaughn pulls it off, it could be heralded as brilliant and give Fox's X-Men franchise the cachet it so desperately needs. And bottom line, audiences love the X-Men, propelling every one of their four films to the top of the box office. Oh, come on, you know you're going to see it. Everyone likes to make fun of the Transformers franchise, but to do that, you need to go see the movies for fodder. And see the movies we do. Both films have pulled in close to a billion dollars each at the box office, and have even been tabloid fodder as Megan Fox decided to bite the hand that discovered her, Michael Bay. She even compared him to Adolf Hitler. The Transformers crew leapt to Bay's defense, issuing a letter publicly that said it was Fox and not Bay that was a horror to have on set. Long story short, Fox is not appearing in Transformers Dark of the Moon and is being replaced with English model Rosie Huntington Whitley, who Michael Bay met while directing a Victoria's Secret commercial. Ah, Michael Bay, you crazy guy. 
Originally, Pixar was vehemently against the idea of making sequels, but they have done a considerable 180. And who can blame them? Toy Story 3 was not only the highest grossing movie of 2010 and the biggest grossing animated film of all time, but was praised by critics and audiences alike. It even won the Golden Globe for Best Animated Film, and odds are it will take the Oscar. So if Pixar can maintain its artistic credibility, why not revisit some of our favorite characters? While Monsters, Inc. 2 will be hitting theaters in 2012, first up is Cars 2, which leaves peaceful Radiator Springs behind to travel across the globe as Lightning McQueen races in the first ever World Grand Prix. Add a layer of James Bond-style espionage, and it looks like Pixar might just top themselves yet again. While some movies change the course of a genre, Twilight has created a genre. And as other studios hurry to catch up, Summit Entertainment is taking Edward and Bella full sex ahead. Yes, Edward and Bella finally sleep together, which should make for some awkward mother-daughter trips to the movie theater. Up to this point, the franchise has been all about celibacy. But with Edward and Bella getting married, all underpants are off. Will the rush of blood make Twilight more powerful than ever, or will it finally jump the vampire? Summit sure hopes not, as this film is just part one of the franchise finale. In Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides, Jack Sparrow looks for the Fountain of Youth. But Johnny Depp has already found immortality by creating one of the most iconic movie characters in years. Jack Sparrow is so beloved, even appearing in the Disney theme parks and stage shows, that he's powering this franchise beyond a mere trilogy. Depp has a whole new cast of characters to interact with, including Penelope Cruz and Ian McShane, while Tony and Academy Award nominee Rob Marshall directs. The buzz on this film is so good, it's rumored that a fifth film is already being fast-tracked. All this, and we get to see Jack Sparrow in 3D2. Talk about a treasure trove of entertainment. While all the other films on this list have a chance of returning yet another time, this is the end for Harry Potter. Lasting for exactly a decade, the Harry Potter movies make up the highest grossing franchise of all time, beating out both James Bond and Star Wars. This is the one movie of 2011 that is a definite must-see. Not just for those who want to find out what happens to Harry and his friends, but for anyone who appreciates the medium of film. This is history. And that's Beyond the Trailer's list of top 10 sequels for 2011. Also be sure to check out BTT's top 10 list of original movies hitting theaters in 2011 by clicking right here. Which movie are you most excited to see this year? Write your thoughts down below, and as always, thanks for watching.